How do brands outlive people? When does a brand really become a brand? Amul ran the oldest ad campaign in history and created one of the biggest brands that we know today. Join us this Friday on Twitter Spaces to know more. Buying what's completely out of favor. This is what usually nobody wants to do. But if you're able to do it right, then there will come a time when everybody wants to do later what you did far earlier than them. I remember buying some companies in 2001 after the tech collapse. These were not in technology, but these stocks also got hammered terribly. They were out of favor through the tech boom and after the tech collapse, they went even further out of favor. Now, typically, no one would expect a company to remain out of favor for such a long period of time. But that's the nature of the market. So, if you look at some spaces which were out of favor from 2012-13, you will find that they remained out of favor in 2018. I'm talking about the capital good companies. Some of these companies remained out of favor right through because they had their heydays in 2008 and they were not going to come back in favor anytime soon. So the regime change in 2014 didn't help. Neither did the small cap bull run of 2018 help. Many of these companies remained soft and not looking attractive to the market. But then, four years later, suddenly, they became the toast of the market. They became the flavor of the market. And they gained so much value within 12 to 18 months that that six, seven year wait looked very much worth it. There are multiple stories like this. If you look at businesses which went out of favor like public banks, the same story will apply. Many of the private banks which remained out of favor for years together because of their restructuring problems of NPAs and then the inability to raise capital, equity capital at favorable valuation. So many factors kept them down. But in the last one year, you've seen private banks as well as public banks rally and gain valuation. So that long period of correction, the phase when nobody wants to buy them, ended and now it looks like everybody wants to buy them. The phase when everybody wants to buy a business is not the time when you should be looking to start buying that business. You should be buying when nobody wants to buy. Only if you are able to do that, only if you develop the mental framework and the mental agility to approach investments that way, you are likely to make better returns. Otherwise, you are another face in the crowd. You're going to be part of the herd and you're going to buy what everybody else is buying when everybody else is buying. Naturally, that will normalize your returns and that will limit the appreciation potential in most of the ideas that you buy in that fashion. Effectively, even in this bull market, you should be looking for something which nobody is looking at. And then when the next correction happens, those companies will also correct probably. Just like I mentioned what happened after the tech collapse. But that's the time when you should be looking more intensely at them, looking to add more of them and looking to scale up those investments into sizable positions in your portfolio. Your investment process and research should support that. You must prepare till that time. So bull markets can also see new ideas. It's not as if there's nothing worth looking at. The success secret for every investor is to find what nobody else is willing to look at now, which you like and which you like more when the market's correct. These are very interesting times to do that. And if you manage to do that, I'm sure that by the time the market sees its next phase of bullishness, you would have bought all the right stocks 
and you would be owning them enough to make superior returns and market beating returns. My experience has been to always look away from what everybody is looking at to spot some areas where valuations are not too expensive but could become very attractive. But I like the business in those areas and if I like those business, I try to start my research and initiate a position in my portfolio. My mind is like something that is in a laboratory where these ideas are all there. I'm looking at them and hopefully some of them would turn out to be even better looking when the market's correct. I would be able to see them more clearly and their valuations will be more favorable to scaling up and sizing up. This is the time to prepare for that phase which will follow and I think everybody has this opportunity. The market is a leveler, a free place where everybody is free to do his own thing. Thank you for watching this video.